Hi, this is Jeff, and I'm going to show you how to put together an Aerotech uh, RMS 2440 reload. Uh, I'm today I'm using a E28, and uh, it happens to be an E28-7, and uh, also uh, I need to actually shorten it a little because of uh, the uh, delay is a little long for the rocket I'd like to use it in. Um, but first I'm just going to show you that these are the parts uh, that come with uh, uh, both the reload and the casing and I've sort of laid them out in order. You've got the, the forward closure, that's part of the casing. You've got two O-rings here. Uh, you've got a delay grain spacer. You've got the delay grain and the delay grain insulator. And then over here you've got the uh, forward O-ring that's the 1 16th o-ring. You've got the forward insulator, you've got the grain adapter, you've got the grain insulator, and of course you've got the grain itself. And then here you have the nozzle, the 3 16th o-ring, and the aft closure. And this of course is the casing itself. And over here you have your ejection charge that comes uh, with it capped. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, I have the instructions right here. You should always keep those handy just so you remember which order the O-rings go in and which uh, O-ring goes to the front and which goes to the back because they are not the same. That is a common mistake that many people make and it was even made by somebody who made a very famous video here on uh, YouTube and got the o-ring wrong so keep your instructions with you at all times uh, first thing I'm going to do is lube up the uh, o-rings I'm just using Vaseline people hate that but it works great for me also remember that you're just trying to get a sheen on these you are take the Vaseline the lubricant does not seal anything all it does is prevent the o-rings from bunching up or deforming when you put pressure on them as you're turning the closures closed. So I'm just getting a sheen on it. Notice I, I'm not even getting any more grease. It's not necessary. All that's necessary is they be lubed and, and slippery. So now I'm wiping my uh, hands with uh, a rag so that I don't get any grease on the delay grain. Another common issue People get grease on the delay grain and the delay grain doesn't burn. If it doesn't burn, your ejection charge doesn't go off. If your ejection charge doesn't go off, you have a bad rocket day. Uh, first thing we're going to do then is we're going to place the o one O-ring into the uh, aft closure. Then we're going to place the, and kind of press that down in there. If you can't get in there, there we go. And you want to get them centered up. Okay, that's the most important thing. Just tamp them down with something. Make sure they're centered up. Okay? And that's pretty simple, but it's important. Take the delay grain insulator. Take your th fingernail. Get rid of any burrs from being cut when the tubing was cut. Okay? Here's my delay grain. You'll notice that I've taken a little divot out of it. That is, using the Aerotech delay tool. As I said, I wanted to take a couple seconds off this delay. Always remember that if you do do that, that goes towards the grain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press that down in, sort of like so. There we go. I'm going to take the delay grain adapter and I'm going to press that in like so. And now we have a delay grain train. You can take that and you can press that into the aft closure like so and you now have a delay grain inserted into your aft closure ready to go notice the divot is going to be towards the rear or towards the burning propellant next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our delay grain uh, Aerotech recommends then that you place some tape on the end of it like I have so that when the igniter goes to the top it doesn't miss and it'll just burn and there's nothing there for it to light you want it to stop when it gets into the slot there so I'm going to take that I've already going to deburr again I've done it once before but I'll deburr the insulator 
we take the masked tape, masking tape end and we press it on in. On this side we take the delay grain adapter and we press it on in. We may have to deburr it again. Sometimes you have to do it a couple of times. There we go. And voila. Right? This is going to go to the front. The taped end is going to go to the front. Next what are we going to do? We're going to take the RMS casing. We're going to insert our propellant in our in our uh, tubing or in our insulator. Now, at this point, Aerotech, okay, uh, well, we'll continue on because it's not quite true yet. We put in, this is the forward insulator. We go ahead and put that in. This is our 1 16th. Make sure you get it right. This is the smaller thickness O-ring. And that goes right there on the front of our forward insulator. And you take your aft closure and screw it on. Now I like to leave it a little loose makes it a little easier to get this end started when we start threading the aft closure. I don't turn it down all the way yet. Aerotech says to turn it down all the way so we're going to turn it down all the way. Okay. And it's tight. Now we have this end. This is where Aerotech says hey go ahead and insert your igniter, your copperhead. I would do that right now but I don't intend on firing this right this minute. Okay, if I was going to fire this tomorrow morning or today, I'd go ahead and insert the copper head. But for now, I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, uh, pay attention now. You, I've already deburred. In other words, I've, sometimes these uh, nozzles come blocked slightly, just part of the molding process. They've got some flashing in the uh, nozzle hole. So I just take a knife or a pencil tip and just it comes right out. Nozzle first. Then the 3 16 inch O-ring, not the other way around. Then the aft closure. This is a part, as I said, it can get a little hard to get the aft closure on. And so, as I said, I like to, which I'm going to do, back off the forward closure just a little bit so I can get at least a thread or two started on here, just like that. Tighten this back down. Take my rag. Aerotech, by the way, sells a wrench to do this, but I'm just going to take my rag and just close that down. And the copper head would be in there. Caught my rag in there. There we go. The copper head, of course, normally would have been in there, and we'd be ready to go, except for, of course, putting on your ejection charge. Don't forget this part. The ejection charge comes in this little handy dandy two piece uh, cup with a cover on it. The small part has the black powder in it. Big part you can save for later. Now, because again, I'm not going to fire this right now, I am not going to throw the black powder in there. I can wait and do that the night before or at the launch, whatever. Instead, I'm just going to pour it in the top cup for a moment. Because if I was going to put this in, I just want to show you that you would carefully snap that on. Give it a little tap like that to get it into the uh, delay grain. And folks, you are done. You can go ahead and hook up. Now, if you're using something other than a copperhead, like a first fi uh, a Firestar or something with a very small lead, your own homemade igniter, you can probably snake it on in there yourself through the nozzle without having to put the igniter in before the aft closure. Uh, some motors are easier than others depending on the slot and the grain geometry. But there you are. Uh, that is how you assemble an Aerotech RMS 2440 with an E28 roughly 7 cut down to about a 5.